through the years, I'm sure you've met a lot of famous people. Yeah. Tell sure us a little have. bit about that. Well, I met some that were really favorites. My all-time favorite singer, of course, I love the big band era with the Paracomos and the Frank Sinatras and all that, but and the big bands. While I was at Clemson, I was on the CDA committee. That was what it was that brought the big bands in for the entertainment, see, for the students there, for football weekends or whatever. So I got a chance to meet some of the big band leaders but uh, and, and a lot of the singers. But the one guy that I really liked was Eddie Arnold. Eddie Arnold, I learned his cattle call when I was about 16, even though that wasn't a big band song, it was pure mm -hmm. country. But uh, during World War II, we had a, a border that stayed at our house that the Navy uh, Yard or the Navy Department sent over there because they put them on a per diem basis where they could, uh, they, they didn't have enough room there in Charleston. So they sent them up to Georgetown, 60 miles away, and he boarded with us. And uh, he had a guitar, and I learned to play the guitar a little bit, but I never did do the country music. But I met Eddie Arnold, and when I threw Archie Campbell, you remember him? Oh, yeah. Archie got me lined up to meet Eddie. And I met him, just had a wonderful time with it. There was a man that I'd always been just wanting to meet. And uh, I, I thought, well, there's no way I'll ever get to see him, but moving here and things working out the way they did and, and meeting Archie. Uh, it worked out the way Archie lined it up for me. And he and I, Eddie and I became very close friends. And I brought him here, Doug Dickey asked me to bring him to a uh, football game here, and I brought him here in 1998, I believe it was, the Florida and... Uh, the National Championship here. Yeah, that's right, and it was a, 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 that particular day, it was Florida and UT playing at uh, uh, UT. But yeah, Eddie Arnold was the one that I met that was real famous and real nice, and of course I met uh, all kinds of the movie stars, including Roy Rogers, mm -hmm. had met him, and I met Lance LaRue, uh, the whip man, you know, the, the famous whip. And then uh, I met uh, people that were singers that I always got wanted to meet that I uh, didn't think I'd ever ever see. But through my contacts in different places, I was able to get over to Nashville, and I got to meet just about everybody that was ever on the Grand Ole Opry. Roy Acuff especially, and he was very good to me and uh, helped me do a lot of things and meet a lot of people. And uh, I guess, the other one that I read it, I pulled a Wagner, got to meet him, and uh, uh, met everybody over there that was uh, working at that time, including many pearls. And I had a lot of many pearl stories yeah. that I'd love to tell, you know. But uh, I got to meet them. But I'll tell you how it, I, I even got so close to Eddie. I learned to sing a lot of his songs, mm -hmm. and I even would breathe at, at the right time and all in his songs, and the tone of his voice and everything. Mm -hmm. I really liked him that well, and I think that, you know, I'd go over there and meet with him, and then we'd go to lunch, and then come back, and he'd pick up the phone, call home, and say, uh, you know, who's you know who's in town, mm -hmm. and his wife Sally said, well, you know what that means, don't you? And she'd say, why? And he said, that means you don't have to cook tonight. <laughs> so we'd go out to dinner together, and just just had a, a, a great time. But Eddie Arnold, and of course Roy Rogers. And Ben Johnson, you remember Ben Johnson? Mm -hmm. Ben Johnson in the last picture show, you know, won the Academy Award in there. Uh, he and I became good friends, and uh, I don't know whether you remember one of the sidekicks. He made more movies than any in television than anybody. Dub Cannonball Taylor, Dub Taylor. Yeah. His yeah. son Newley was on Gunsmoke with James Arness mm -hmm. as Newley, and his name was Buck Taylor. Mm -hmm. I got to meet all of them, and. Uh, the uh, original Superman, met the original Superman, Kirk Allen, had him at our house. We had a big barbecue when they would come down to our Western Film Convention. That's a whole other story there. We started doing that here. <laughs> and uh, brought in people like that, including uh, Ellie Mae from the Be Beverly yeah. Hillbillies, had, met her and had her at home. Lou DeWitt, all of the Statler brothers. Mm -hmm. a matter of fact, the name of my book, The Knoxville Cowboy, I, well, I don't know whether you realize it. Is that or not. the one Jackie Pennington wrote? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that title is a title of a song that was written for me by Lou DeWitt of the Statler Brothers that oh. wrote Flowers on the Wall and yeah. all of those. Uh -huh. So I got to meet all those people, and uh, hard, wasn't hardly anybody in the music business at that time that I, I didn't meet. Looking back at your life, what are you the most proud of? 
my wife, Catherine, we were married 61 years in one day. And uh, meeting her, a true Southern beauty, Southern belle, having been born in Savannah and growing up in Charleston, uh, it, it was just all, everything was there. She was an, uh, just, you know, she could have played Gone with the Wind. I mean, that's the way she looked. And she was just beautiful and a, such a good person. That was the first the, the real accomplishment of my life was her. And uh, we had, of course, tragedies with our family. I guess you knew about that. I lost two of my children, and now I've lost her, but my son. My firstborn is Drew, you've met here. Mm -hmm. uh, we live together here in Loudoun. But uh, we moved to Loudoun with Catherine, my wife, back in, uh, I guess it was 2008, and she died in uh, 2018. We lived together here 10 years. But uh, I guess you might say, to answer this broadly, I did everything that I ever wanted to do in my lifetime. Wow, what a blessing. And I just hope that it was a long, rough journey at times. There was sadness and there were good times, elated times. But I just hope that during that journey, and it seems it, when you're young, everything seems like it's going to last forever. But now that I'm at the age I am now, it seems it's like, where did the time go? It was so fast. That's why we need to do what we can while we're uh, alive and can do it, because life doesn't wait that long. But the one thing that out of all of this, I just hope during that long, rough time that uh, I did everything I wanted to do, and I just hope that no one that I knew got hurt along the way. So, last question. What do you want your legacy to be? I'd like my legacy to be this, that I've been as good a man as I could with what I had to work with. We're also all limited. And I think I made the best of it. And there again, I hope that I served others along the way and reached them and inspired them to the point that they might themselves find out who they are mm -hmm. and okay. what they really love. But I look back on my childhood days and my father always uh, had a great reputation. He just always just told us that reputation was better than riches. Mm -hmm. And if you could leave your son and your family a legacy of happiness, joy, an understanding of what life is, then you have served the reason God put you here in the first place. That's right. That's good. But I wanted to tell the story about Coach Howard and, yes. and the poem. Looking back over this, and uh, I had such a great time at Clemson, but I, I just wanted to say that I wrote this poem about him, and I was always afraid to give it to him or let him see it before he died, because, you know, it's, who wants to show it? <laughs> talking about death. <laughs> but he was such a figure over there, and he meant so much to me, and so did Ed McLendon, the coach in high school, who mm -hmm. saw, saw the potential in me. He also played for Howard, even though they were very close together in age. Frank Howard uh, said this. He's, uh, he was always trying to make a better boy out of the, a better man out of the boy who came to Clemson. Those were his words, not mine. But here's what I wrote about him. He came from Alabama with nothing on his knee but visions of a head coach that someday he would be. In his passing, he would want no praise, no glory, just someone to tell his own special kind of story and that you place his spirit on the hill at the stadium on the hill and leave it there to stay, where on Saturday afternoons he can hear the roar of the crowd and his tigers growl when they come out to play. <laughs> good job, good job. That's good. Well, I want to thank you so much for uh, spending time with me. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I want to wish you the best. Well, Darrell, I want to thank you for thinking of me and for spending the time that you have with me and listening to my rambling. <laughs> all this time. Whatever happened to Randolph Scott riding the trail alone? Whatever happened to Roy and Jean? I wish I could see them again. 
Whatever happened to Johnny Mac Brown and Alan Rocky Lane? Whatever happened to Red Paul Scotts? Happened to the industry? Whatever happened to Red Paul Scotts? Happened to you and me?